Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, today I'm going to take a look at a puzzle type I haven't seen before. Um, this comes from Simon's latest Taketa Japanese puzzle book where it was recommended as, as a really good puzzle. So, um, it's called Heterocut and I've written the rules up here. You have to divide this grid into some different shapes of two, three, four or five squares. Arrows shown show some cuts already made and point to the shape of the bigger area from the smaller one. So shapes cannot be identical, even being rotated or reflected. That's clearly very important. And that's why I've put up here a diagram of all the possible shapes we can enter. Now you could look at this puzzle for a while and go, what on earth? How can you start? But the key thing to notice or count is that the puzzle is 12 by 7. That's 84 cells. Now, there are 12 possible pentominoes, that's 60 cells. 5 tetrominoes is another 20. Then another 8 cells between the triominoes and the domino. That's just 88 cells possible to fit into an 84 cell grid. That means that there's four that we're not going to be using. That must be one single tetromino. So we know that we're going to be using all 12 pentominoes, four of the tetrominoes, and the other three smaller shapes. Um, all very well, you may say, but how do we know where any of those go? Well, I think let's start. Remember these arrows point from a smaller shape to a larger shape. So all the cells they point from must be in what I'm going to call smaller shapes. Now they could be any of four, three and two. And let's remember the arrows could point from a two to a three or a four as well as into a five shape. Sorry, a five might be a very non-intelligent number to be using here because I don't, I'm not talking about pentominoes. I'm just using it because Five looks a bit like S standing for smaller. So sorry if that's confusing, but that's what I've gone for. So these fives point from smaller shapes into larger shapes. And how many have we got? We've got six, nine, eleven, fifteen of those already. And we're only going to be using 16, 19, 24 cells in smaller shapes. And we've already placed 15 of them. So that's quite a start. Um, also down in this corner, we can put another one in here because we know there's a line down here and this is part of a shape that's obviously larger than one cell. So we've got 16 of the 24 smaller shapes par um, placed. But what else can we do? Well, one thing we can do is to consider how many smaller shapes we're placing. And it's going to be four of the tetrominoes and the other three even smaller shapes. So that's seven shapes. So these, um, was it 15, 4, 6, 7, 10, 12, 16 smaller cells that we've placed have to fit into just seven shapes. And that actually does seem a bit restrictive. Um, how could that possibly work? Well, we could have a T tetromino here. These four over the right side of the grid, let's try and just fit them into two shapes. That would have to be an I there and an L here. This cell must be in something larger than the four shapes, so it can't be in it. So we've got L, I and T tetromino. We've only got an S tetromino to place and we'd better try and use up two cells with that. So I think that could go here. Now you may be saying but that arrow points into one of these smaller shapes but that must point into it from an even smaller shape. So I think this works. This could be the four tetrominoes and they're all different. So that's quite neat. I think that works for those. And it really uses up the ones well. And now you can probably see from these other fives or S's that we can fit them into the three smallest shapes. Um, it's clearly going to work for this arrow that, that might have been a problem. So this is going to have to be a three. 
Now, one of these is a two and one of them's a three. And the three is the kind of L-shaped three. But we don't know which way around they are. I think this is right. I mean, I'm going to highlight all of these cells that I've got um, done so far in... Uh, let's use blue for the smaller shapes. And I'll put these two in red for now or whatever pinkish colour this turns out to be. And one of these four cells, we're not really sure about them. I'll put them in grey. One of those is another smaller shape piece. But now, apart from the cells we've coloured, every other cell in the grid and three of these grey cells have to be in pentominoes. So we can start creating some of those. This must be one here. Let's colour it brown, say. And this is very useful. These two must be in a pentomino. So that must go all the way up here to get five cells. And that means that those grey cells are gone. Oh, sorry, I'm not choosing grey colours here. Let's make the pentominoes green. That one. That's a yellow, okay. So we've got two of the pentominoes placed. Again, we can do another pentomino up here. So that's fine. One of these gray cells, remember, is in a pentomino and the other one is completing the triomino. But now we have to fill kind of the rest of this grid and resolve this ambiguity with the pentominoes. And we've used three of the more useful shapes, actually. We've used that one, that one, and the L shape. So we've got all these others to put in. Um, so this cell looks... Oh, what well, maybe we can... If this... Yeah, if this, were, if this cell was the part of the triomino, then there'd be a pentomino here, which would either be that, but we've used it already, or instead it would be that, but we've used that already. So this one cannot be in the pentomino, it must be in the triomino, and okay, now we have to fill the rest of this grid with pentominoes. So, how do we do that? Um, these, that could be the eye shape, or that shape, I'm not sure what it's called, or the full L shape. Um, this one, there's two possibilities. That would leave us, I don't think, that we could then fill the top section without having a repeat of some sort. Um, okay, I'm just going to pretend, I don't think this is right, but if, if that was a pentomino, then... Now, if this was part of the X one, and we've got to fit one of those in somewhere, and they're difficult, so it could well be. That might be there. But then these 10 cells up here would have to be two identical pentominoes, so that can't be right. The alternative is that something comes out. This goes up into here. Then it would have to either repeat a shape there or there, or we could have S there, and sorry, I don't, I should know the shape references, and I'm not brilliant on those. That's possible. I have a feeling this isn't going to work. It doesn't feel right in some way. Um, I mean, where are we going to get an X shape in now? very difficult. And in fact, I'm pretty sure this cannot work. 
we've got too many difficult shapes to put in at this point. The only place I could see for an X shape now would be there, and that would lead to repeats of shapes we've used already. So I'm very confident, although I can't be 100% certain, but I am confident that means that shape didn't work there. So I think this, these three have to be in the X shape there. Now, I've worked out finally that I should stop using yellow because it doesn't make spotting the remaining shapes very easy. Um, now, how are we going to go about up here? Again, we could do that. But it's going to be difficult to get round here with anything. Um, five up there. Now that works. Um, but yes, I like that. That works. It's very difficult to, to fit any shapes into this part of the grid up here without overusing this um, blocky pentomino shape, which I think is E. So yes, I like that being the one piece. Let's go with that. Oh, the R. Yeah. That can be there. Grey. That's the big L. Um, mm. Now the trouble with this is we need this to be something, and the only thing I think it can now be is that S, or whatever that's called. This clearly has to be that shape, because we've used the other possibility there. Oh, yeah, 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 this is working. Look at this. So that can be the blocky shape. And this is quite a difficult shape to fit in that we haven't even tried to this point. I'm going to make it blue, finally. And there we go. That has tiled the whole grid, um, and that works. Now, okay, that was a little bit of a trial solution. I mean, I proved to my satisfaction that these three weren't part of the shape that looks like that, but maybe I didn't prove that to yours. I'd be very interested to know how you've got on with solving this puzzle. I mean, I feel this is clearly the right solution. I mean, I do look at these as though from a competitive point of view, I like to get to a final solution that works and then I'm satisfied I've done it. And that may be not the most rigorously logical way to approach it, but that's what I've done. I mean, it's a lovely puzzle. It's really interesting to think that that's got a unique solution and even making the jumps to those first... Um, smaller shape parts was quite difficult. Um, as I say, I'd be very interested to know in the comments if you knew ways of being a bit more rigorous about the tiling procedure towards the end there, um, and what you thought of the puzzle generally. Um, thanks very much for watching. Do please subscribe if you haven't already and you like this sort of stuff, or sponsor us on Patreon if you like even more. Um, there's probably a new puzzle coming out fairly soon on that. And um, obviously do remember to try our apps. Our new classic Sudoku app is rating very well on Android and the App Store. I know and probably on Steam as well. So we're delighted with it and uh, recommend it very highly as well as our original sandwich Sudoku app. So thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic.